Bonjour, Monsieur Dame. C'est un grand plaisir et honneur pour moi d'accueillir Votre Excellence Ahmadi Chabali, Premier ministre de Tunisie, à notre réunion annuelle 2012. Nous allons avoir une grande discussion sur le printemps arabe, mais nous avons ici l'homme qui a été élu il y a un mois. Il a été élu juste un mois avant, juste un mois avant. Dans votre nouvelle fonction. You've uh, been Prime Minister for the past month only, and I'd simply like to say to you that uh, you're someone who spent, I think I'm right in saying, 15 years in prison. And uh, I remember reading about uh, your hunger strikes, which shows that you uh, have a great spirit of resistance. You are therefore the symbol of uh, what has happened in the Arab world. And we're very happy to uh, welcome you here to the Davos Forum as the legitimately elected Prime Minister of your country after everything that has been happening in the Arab world over the past 12 months. Prime Minister, welcome to this meeting, welcome to this stage. Assalamu alaikum. Shukran. Thank you, Professor Schwab. Thank you for this uh, very interesting event. It is my pleasure on my behalf and on behalf of the Tunisian government, the elected, uh, the first elected government by the Tunisian people after its revolution, this peaceful and white revolution. It is my pleasure to participate in this uh, social, uh, political and economic event carrying with me a message of hope and optimism. This revolution that has impressed the world. For the first time, the Tunisian people elects a legitimate government, a representative government. It is the first time that we will build a democratic state. The first steps of this state would be the establishing of a constitution and the first time in the Tunisian history a constitution that will protect our democracy, a constitution that stipulates for the respect of private and public freedoms, the respect of human rights that uh, criminalizes torture that establishes uh, and lays down uh, the basis for a modern state, an open state that respects institutions, that respects uh, judicial independence, that preserves the freedom of the press, that provides for a freedom of belief uh, to all Tunisians. Uh, there will be no discrimination as to religion, language, gender or other. Moreover, this 
constitution will support the various constituents of uh, the Tunisian uh, society and its achievement as to uh, women's rights. Uh, this is one of the major step, uh, uh, steps to be taken by the Tunisian people within a year. Until we establish this new constitution for Tunisia, the government, which I have uh, the honor of uh, presiding will exert uh, big efforts uh, as to achieving social justice and transitional justice transitional justice uh, will allow to restore the uh, individual and collective uh, rights to people uh, this transitional justice will respect the rule of law and will not uh, carry out any uh, reprisals uh, these are the uh, specificities of the new uh, Tunisian uh, government and new Tunisian Tunisian society. It has become an example to be followed throughout the world. This experience has opened wide horizons for the Arab world. It is a great honor for us uh, for it to have started uh, in Tunisia, this Arab Spring that carries the hopes of our peoples. But it is also a revolution of dignity carried out by our people. It was based on freedoms. As I have said, we have moved a long way ahead and there will be a constitution very soon. Dignity means also development. It means also social justice. Here the Tunisian experience is faced with uh, huge challenges for what we inherited from uh, dictatorship, uh, the social oppression we have inherited. Tunisia is faced with challenges today. In Tunisia, we have today 800,000 unemployed, including 200,000 uh, uh, of uh, uh, graduate uh, people uh, holding uh, uh, degrees and uh, diplomas from universities. Every year, 75,000 uh, graduate from Tunisian universities and join uh, unemployed uh, people. So this is a huge uh, challenge laying ahead of us. The deficit in the budget has amounted to 6%. Moreover, one-fifth of the Tunisian population today is suffering from poverty. 400,000 of our people, of our youth, especially in uh, uh, marginalized uh, parts, do not earn more than one euro per day. This is a huge challenge that we have to face, a, a challenge that faces uh, this uh, beautiful Tunisian experience, which has, uh, as I have said, achieved uh, uh, big uh, political uh, gains, but hopefully the hurdles uh, will not uh, prevent uh, political evolution in our country. But in spite of these uh, circumstances, I do not wish to be uh, pessimistic. We are still determined. We are confident in success because this uh, democratic choice uh, is an irreversible choice. This is why we will be relying upon ourselves first, then upon our friends and allies in Europe and in the United States, we are glad that President Obama has, uh, Obama has announced its uh, support of the Tunisian uh, experience. The same applies uh, for the EU and uh, the Arab Mashrik uh, countries. I would like to conclude with a note of optimism, because in Tunisia we have enough human resources, enough human skills. We have an educated uh, elite. Uh, we have uh, 
well-trained uh, people. We have openness. We have moderation and we have a coalition that is established for the first time and that encompasses uh, parties with uh, various affiliations, uh, Islamists, liberals and others. This is something we are to preserve. In Tunisia, we have also very good infrastructure. We have a middle class, a big middle class, although it was trained during previous decades. We have reforms. We would like to strengthen these reforms, namely as to promoting transparency, the independence of the judiciary, the independence of uh, regulatory institutions in the state. We would like to carry out reforms as to investments and the laws that govern investments. We would like to support free market local and international investors. The uh, Tunisian economy, in spite of various difficulties, uh, has a major added uh, value. Tourism is still uh, uh, very strong. We have uh, the textile industry, and of course this industry could further evolve. We have uh, electromechanical industry that uh, could evolve in in spite of various difficulties we face. We have a plane and car industries, we have food industries that require further improvement in addition to high technological services in uh, media and telecommunications. Uh, we have financial services also, and we hope that uh, Tunisia will be able to become a hub, uh, a hub or a platform for financial exchange. We have also good healthcare services. We wish to further improve such services. Tunisia is an open country, thanks to the nature of its uh, population. We have uh, social cohesion. We do not have uh, problems uh, between various social classes. We do not have confessional, uh, confes uh, confessional uh, disagreements. Tunisia is the gate uh, to the Arab world, is the gate to Africa. It is uh, a country open to its uh, European and global uh, neighbors. Tunisia will be, thanks to this uh, democratic uh, experience and with the support of its population and friends, uh, hope for the future, hope for the Arab Spring, and hope for uh, international peace. Thank you.